Hello again, welcome to part three of this video series. My name is Ben Schumann and we'll explore how we turn a normal AnyLogic network into a purely agent-based representation for a much more powerful control of that network. So in this video, I want to check out how we actually instantiate our network agents. So in the previous video, we learned about the hierarchy of the model. And now we want to see how we actually instantiate agents in that hierarchy. So we learned that we have these populations of a underscore some node. And let's start with instantiating rectangular nodes. So when we start the model, on main there's really nothing happening, we just navigate to an animation, but we also have a single instance of our model agent, so that is being instantiated for you. And on startup of that model agent, we call a little function f create network, which as an input argument takes an actual any logic network. So here you can provide it any network. You could have several networks and call this function several times if you wanted to. So it takes as an argument of the network. And what it's doing is two things in one. So don't um, get overwhelmed by this code. We want to focus on one of those two things in this video. The two things are create an agent-based representation of the network. That's what we talk about. The second thing is um, creating a network equivalent in JGraph T for pathfinding. We'll do that later. Let's just instantiate agents today. So we will uh, ignore this little bit up here for now and actually look how do we instantiate agents. First, we instantiate all nodes from the network and then all paths. So for nodes, what we do is we use this little function um, network.getNodeCount gives you the number of nodes in the network. And then we basically pull out the actual node from that network. Use Check that I'm using node here. Remember what we learned about the adject hierarchy. A node is can be a rectangular node. It can be a polygonal node. It can be a point node. Hence, I'm using node to be as generic as possible. So I have the actual node in my hand now. And now I'm creating agents for each of those nodes. I check out if this node that I have in my hand is a rectangular node using the instance of method. And again, this is an any logic rectangular node, a network rectangular node, no a underscore here. If that's the case, I know, oh good, I have got a rectangular node right now. Let me instantiate a rectangular node agent and what that rectangular node agent needs is a string name. That is the first parameter of each node. And the second parameter is the actual rectangular node. So let's check it out. Rectangular node has one parameter, p my rectangular node. That is the second argument. And the first argument is kind of hidden here. That is part of the network markup element parent class, just a string the name. These are the two arguments that we provide. And then we have a new rectangular node. And the thing that we do once the rectangular node agent is instantiated is on startup, we call this fset animation. This actually now changes uh, our little rectangle here and overlays it on top of the network. So we're changing the x, y coordinates of our little rectangle here to match our network node. We're changing the width and the height, height and also the uh, position of that little uh, text object here, which represents the name. So in our model, oops, when we look at the network, that is the little magic here. Above each network rectangle, we now have a agent representation, which you can click on. It's exactly the same position, width and height than the network object. And not much more to it. With polygonal nodes and point nodes, it's conceptually the same thing. If we see that our node in the network is a polygonal node, we also instantiate a polygonal node. Polygonal node is being instantiated, we call the same function fset animation on start. But this one is slightly uh, more involved because a polygonal node is made up 
or is constructed differently. So we change the xy coordinate of our polyline now. The visual representation of a polygonal node is a polyline, which is again part of the presentation library. And it lets you provide it with as many points and put those points in whatever position you want to. And that's exactly what we do in this code. First, we set the xy position to match our actual polygonal node. Then we say how many points should this little polyline have, as many as our, our polygonal node. And then we set for each point the xy coordinates <clears throat> to be exactly the same as with our node. We change the text position and that's it. And this gives us these polygonal nodes here. You see that they are not rectangles. These completely duplicate the polygonal node, but they're actually polylines that have an on-click call. Then point nodes, conceptually exactly the same thing. We instantiate, if we find out our node is actually a point node, which is uh, one, of, sorry, one of these things here, one of these things here. We have a couple in the network. There we go. Point node. It's called rectangle 17. That's just a bad way of naming things. But it's part of the network node. If we find out that we have a point node, then we instantiate point node agents with a string name and the actual point node typecaster. And with a point node, it's almost well, it's a lot simpler than with a polyline. We represent it with an oval, so it can be it can have different sizes actually. On the instantiation, we call the set animation function. We change the x y position of the oval, well, of the agent itself and thereby of the oval to where the point is. Set its radius to what the point node radius is because point nodes can have different radii. radii. If I make this bigger in the network, you have bigger nodes. And then we change the text name again. So those three, quite similar, quite simple. The last thing when we create our network is after creating all node agents is to create path agents. Similar approach, we get the path count, how many paths are there in the network, and we pull the actual path from the network. And when we look into our path agent, it has four parameters. First one is the name again, because all network markup elements have a name. And then there are three more. There is the my path, so a parameter that links to the actual network path, of type path. And then we want two more things. This will become um, clear when we talk about JGraph T plotting, but it basically says, um, do I go forward or do I go backward? So let's ignore that for now. So all we do is, um, you know, we do a little bit of computation for the JGraph T stuff. We'll ignore that. But in the end, we instantiate a path agent with a name linked to the actual path. And then this kind of edge stuff, we'll talk about that. And all the rest is just, just again, JGraph T stuff that we'll talk about. So when our path is instantiated, again, we call F set animation to actually link the path animation to the actual network path. So we use a polyline again, but this time it's not a closed polyline like with our polygonal node. This one is closed. This time it is an open polyline. It's uh, kind of thicker as well, so we can actually click on it. It has the F on click stuff. And what we do again conceptually is similar to what we did with a poly, poly line. We set the XY coordinates. We change the number of points to match what the path in the network had. And then we loop through each point. And basically, it's a, it's a little messy code, but we put each point where it should be. Um, there's a little bit of magic here trying to go into the actual network path and get the individual points of where they are using segments and stuff. Uh, check it out. But this duplicates a network path into a polyline. Changing the text again or the text position. Here also changing the color. If it is a bidirectional path, we make it kind of green. Otherwise, we make it gold. Hence, 
Most of them look green, this one looks gold. And that's it. This is how we instantiate our agents. If you would simply strip out all the JGraphT stuff, you would still have now an agent-based representation of your network. You'd have the on-click capabilities. Uh, you could do with these agents what you want, um, but you wouldn't be able to use actual network traveling through the network. Any logic would still use its own network, so it would not yet work. You'd only have an agent representation. Not quite useful yet. So in the next video, make myself bigger again. In the next video, we will start looking into JGraphT and how we uh, set it up, how we create a representation of the network in JGraphT, a conceptual network representation, and then how we actually use it in our agent-based world. So stay tuned.